Okay, so today we have on Matt Ishby, a president and CEO of United Wholesale Mortgage, which under his leadership has gone from 12 to over 8,000 people and has become the nation's number one wholesale lender, also an NCAA basketball champion at Michigan State and luxurious gift giver. How was that? Was that good? <laughs> okay, so uh, you've, you've been president for around seven years now, correct? Yeah, uh, since 2013. So yeah, seven, eight years. Can you kind of touch on the company's main visions, values, and, and just overall mission? Yeah, you know, we're a mortgage company, you know, so, you know, we're, we, we, we deliver faster, easier, cheaper mortgages than our competitors. How do we do that? I do it with great people. I mean, you can, mortgages are boring. You guys only want to hear about mortgage. I could talk mortgage all day because it's fun for me, but it's, you know, the reality is what we do here is I got 8,000 awesome people. We're about people. We're about a culture and great a great opportunity for people to grow and do great things. And we, and we compete. We're very competitive. We'll talk a little bit about some of the things we do, but uh, you know, we're a mortgage company that tries to deliver great service to mortgage brokers. So we don't have to have our big commercial. We're the number two overall mortgage company in the country, number one wholesale lender, but um, we don't have commercials and all that. So we work with independent mortgage brokers, whether they're in Alabama, Minnesota, New Jersey, we work with all of them and we are their partners to actually lend money to consumers. And so, uh, it's a, I love what I do. I love what we do here. And at the same time, I got a great team of people around me. So it makes it a lot of fun. Yeah. What I've been super impressed about is, is your growth. I, I was watching interviews from just like this past year and every two months of the, of the difference in the interview, the amount of people would go up by about a thousand. It was 4,000, 5,000. like, which of these is right? And then I saw something that came out today that said 8,000. So I said, I'm going to stick with that one. Yeah, yeah, we've been growing a lot. You know, it's hard to grow that much, especially during a pandemic. Uh, however, you know, so 65, 66% of all the people that come work here are referred by someone else that works here because it's a great culture. The one I wish if you ever guys are in Michigan, you guys come out and check it out. It's it's such a fun place to call it. You just can't do it because I only got, you know, 20% capacity right now relative. We used to have 8,000 people. Now I got 2,000 people here. It's just a little different. But it's a uh, we're growing a lot. You know, we last Monday, uh, just you know, last week we just hired you know 530 people started our company. So literally um, joining our team because we have a huge opportunity to grow. And so it's just operational capacity along with technology investments. Those are the two things that will catapult our growth. And so we're going all in and planning on growing a lot this year. Yeah, and and most of our listeners are kind of interested in how you're going public through a SPAC. Can you touch on why you're going public through that route, although you don't really need the capital infusion? And and you just kind of touched on the culture of the company. Will that affect it at all? And I know you you're are you giving them all one thousand dollars in in the new stock once it goes yeah. public? Everyone's getting a minimum of a thousand. Most people are getting a lot more. I, I like the, the thing I just the, the five hundred people that started you know last week you know they, on Monday are all getting a thousand dollars in shares. Um, you know, we're real big on, it's a family company. So even when the company officially is public, I'm gonna still control 94% of the, of the shares in the company. And so some people can say that's a bad thing. Some people can say, it's actually a great thing because you know, me and the leadership team, we're the same people that have got us to where we're at. And there's a saying, what got you here won't get you there, but I don't believe that. I think what got us here, we're gonna stay in the weeds of the business. I'm gonna stay here. I get in the office at 4 a.m. I stay till 637, I'm grinding every day. We're going to become the number one overall lender. You know, our, our goals is not to be the number two overall lender. I don't like saying that, it's, but at the same time, that's where we are today. Um, but the plan is to continue to grow. And the, the SPAC concept was basically, you know, we're competing with, you know, we're the, you know, right now Rocket's number one, we're number two. Then right behind us is Wells Fargo, then Chase and Bank of America. I mean, these are the companies that I'm competing with. And it's just been me and, 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 and a family company. And, and, you know, we're trying, we don't have any private equity backing. We're, we're, we're just trying, and so we got a chance. I met Alec Gores, um, who's a great guy. He's done a, he's done a, a, a bunch of awesome SPACs. He's like the, I consider him the godfather of SPACs. He looks at a lot of deals. He knows it inside and out and got a chance to spend time with him and realize that, gosh, what would level the playing field for UWM? Access to capital at a whole other level. Access to resources at a whole other level. And that's what we're doing now. Um, so I don't have to make a decision. Do I invest in technology or something else? And I always chose technology. Now I can invest in technology and servicing and other things to continue to catapult the business. And it's not, you know, although we're getting a lot of money and we have a lot of, we're making a lot of money. We had a, we had a huge year in, in, in 2020. You know, my expectation is to, to do more volume, more mortgages in 2021 and, and make it not even close. But with that being said, I'm not cashing out, you know, so back to the 94%, you know, I'm all in, you know, when the yeah. stock goes up, I, 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 I win with you guys. We're all, when we do a, we're paying a dividend, we're going to pay a really nice dividend and maybe it's even, we'll even expand that in the future. Uh, but 
I, I get, I'm part of the dividend too. I'm an owner like you guys. And so we're all on the same team. We're going to win and win long-term is the play. Right. Yeah. So kind of touching on, um, you know, obviously your growth this year has been incredible. Um, you know, you, you, you guys are growing at a huge rate. Do you feel, how much of that do you feel is because of low interest rates? I mean, we're, we're seeing interest rates that are, you know, I mean, we're basically giving away money as a country right now. You can borrow money for, you know, cents on the dollar. How, how much has that effect, you know, how much does that affect your growth? And do you see this growth continuing even with an increase in interest rates? Yeah, that was a great question. So anyone who has a mortgage guy or gal these days can make money in, in, in an environment like this, right? We, but the way I think about it is we've been in a steady path of growth the way we've done for the last six, seven years. You know, when I got here in 2003, I was a 12th person and now we have 8,000 people. But even in 2012, 13, when I became the CEO, you know, it was, we had like a thousand people. It was not the same level. We we're doing 13, 14 billion dollars of mortgage year. You know, this, you know, and our expectation in 2021 is to do well, well north of 200 billion. And so it's grown a lot now. So what I would say to that is, yes, obviously we're doing better when rates are lower than if rates were higher. However, you know, 2016 was Brexit. If you remember, rates went, rates were low and then they went up 17 and 18. You want to see a good mortgage company. Look and see who made money in 2017 and 18. Uh, from 2016 to 18, our compound annual growth rate was 28%. So we grew. Place like Rocket went down 14% because Rocket's like 95% refinance. So those guys, and so I always tell people about our mortgage businesses, we don't look as good in the good times. So we're looking good right now, but we don't look as good. We're, we're, we're less cyclical. We don't look as bad in the bad times. So we actually win when rates go up. So I'm actually excited. We're going to win right now. We're going to take advantage of it, make a lot of money, be very successful. Well, when rates tick up in 2023, 2024, whenever that happens, that's when we'll become the number one overall lender because the, the people that are doing all the refinances, like we're doing refinances, but that's not my only game. Yeah. You know, we're a purchase business. Yeah. And so I think it's, it's, it's definitely going to, that's like the next inflection point of growth. And when everyone else is going to struggle, we're going to win. Yeah, and I think a really good point um, that, you know, as we're going through this interview, I, I think I love, you know, as an investor, I think one of my favorite things when I look at this is one, how much ownership you have and two, you know, your competitive edge. Dan and I were talking about it. We watched some of your other interviews. And I think one thing that we love is your competitive edge. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm competitive. It's just like you guys are doing great things. I'm trying to hustle and make things happen. And uh, I'm very competitive. I'm 41 and so I'm older than you guys. But at the same time, I've got a long run in front of me to build this thing up. And, and like I said, you know, although being number two out of whatever 30,000 mortgage companies in America is pretty cool, it's not where we want to be. And we're going to continue to grow. And I got a great team of people around me. They make me look great and they work hard and they do great things. We're a great team together. Yeah, it's uh, one, one other thing that was kind of as you're speaking towards the future, uh, one of your first towards your earlier days of working there was 2008. What was that whole situation like, even though you weren't the CEO? I mean, I'm sure it was still crazy. Yeah, you know, what was interesting. And so the, the company was originally started by my father. My father is an attorney. He's never actually worked here. He's got like he had like eight businesses. He had a small little mortgage company. I came and started working there. And, you know, kind of started building it. And I became an EVP. Honestly, you know, there's 12 people. It doesn't really matter. I was, a, I was, a, my first job was taking faxes off the fax machine. I made $18,000 a year. That's what my father paid me for the first year. And like I said, he, and, and it kind of evolved. But the, the 08, so I, one of the things I always give my father credit, I love my father. He's a great man. He's 72 years old and he's just a great guy. I talk to him almost every morning. Uh, he drives to his, he drives to his law firm at six in the morning and calls me. I'm already at the office and we chat for a minute or two. Um, but what I give him credit for is back then, we didn't do subprime mortgages. I was new to the business. I said, hey, dad, why don't we do this loan or this loan? And he said, listen, Matt, one thing we're going to do, we're not running a mortgage. We don't ever run the mortgage company just to make money. Do right by people. Think about the long term. And just because we're going to make a commission by lending someone money, if they, oh, we're not going to lend someone $150,000 when their house is worth one twenty-five. dollars We're just not going to do it. Right. And so the 08 time frame where everyone else struggled, it was actually one time where it was like, it was, you know, someone who likened it to uh, probably you don't even know this movie, like Forrest Gump. It's an old movie, older movie, but like there's a thing called bu Bubba Gump Shrimp. Like we're the only shrimp boat left out there. Like yeah. we were doing things the right way, the right loans. And so when all that stuff crashed in 08, it, that was actually our time to shine. And that's really a, an inflection point of when we started to grow because we were doing the co conventional and FHA loans and we were struggling in those boom years because we didn't want to focus on the wrong type of loans. 
Right. Yeah. I think that's something super impressive about you is how you always, I, I just saw another interview with you about how you were saying how to make COVID like this whole period turn into a productive and good time for you. And I think that that may have reflected like the whole 2008 thing. Absolutely. Okay. So going into some questions uh, from looking at things at the UWM headquarters, like the Breslin center conference room in your office, it's obvious that Michigan state basketball has played a large part in your life and in turn, how you lead your company. How's your time playing under the and coaching with the legendary Tom Izzo prepare you for the corporate world? And what is more competitive, uh, the Big Ten or the mortgage lending industry? <laughs> yeah, so so I, w- I got a j- cr- chance to play for Tom Izzo. Um, I was a walk-on, so I made the team as a preferred walk-on. Eventually earned a scholarship. I played four years, but I wasn't any good, to be clear. I was a, the 14th player. I, <laughs> I, people, I had to be the hardest working guy to be the worst player on that team. Um, but my first three years were three Big Ten championships, three Final Fours, and we won a national championship in 2000. And so it was a pretty cool experience uh, to be part of that. Uh, learning from Izzo as a player, and then I coached with him for my fifth year to learn as a, was just, I, I give that, I, between him and my parents, I give that all the credit for where I'm at right now. You know, I learned, you know, my dad is a giving, humble, friendly person, take care of people, do right. And Izzo's a driving force competitive outwork oh, everybody. Yeah. And so I try to combine the best of both yeah. those things. And, and that's what it is. So what's more competitive, the mortgage or big dot? I, I don't know. Uh, mortgage is very competitive. Big 10 is, uh, is you know, there's less teams, but man, it, it's a zero sum game. Only one team can win a championship in the big 10. I, I'll give you one thing. You were 41 and four in the games you played in. So <laughs> I mean, that that's an impressive stat. And I actually found a uh, 1998 newspaper that uh, really hit and really compared you to uh to Pip from the Charles Dickens novel, Great Expectations. And they were talking about your senior year, but but that was what they hit on the whole time was was making it a pun on Great Expectations. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was a, it was a great time back then playing. And, and like I said, I wasn't that good. I, I worked hard to be on that team, and uh, but it was a cool experience. And, uh, and uh, you know, I learned so much. It, it, it was a lot of fun. I, I don't know if you follow basketball closely, but Izzo is a great coach. Oh, yeah. I, I'm a, I'm a big Auburn guy. Uh, the we you know I'm sure you saw our recent run to the Final Four. So, yeah, so. I was actually there because Michigan State was in the uh, Final Four too. Yeah, yeah, we, we we both got you know we should have been there together. We should have been the final together, but they didn't call the double dribble. I've never seen Kyle Guy with the three in a row. Man, it was that was tough. Un- un- unbelievable. I, I was there. I'm on your side of that one. I, I was shocked. Yeah, insane. But um, so y'all just became the exclusive sponsor bill on the helmets of the Detroit Red Wings. How does this bond partnership, uh, how did that kind of develop? And how do you think that'll help grow your business? Yeah, you know, just, you know, local here, you know, here it's about getting great people on join. The more our brand is out there, you know, we never really focus on getting our brand out there because we're behind the mortgage brokers. We're the, we're the silent brand. We power the mortgage brokers, the, you know, 40,000 loan officers, 50,000 loan officers throughout America. We make them successful, whether they're in Alabama, Minnesota, South Dakota, LA. And so we don't need our name out in front. We want them to look good. But now we also, but locally, we do want our name out in front because we want, we're, we're, we're creating talent. We're, like I said, we get 300 people apply to work at our company every day, which is 6,000 a month. And we pick the best three, four, five, six, seven hundred to join. And so we want our name out there. So the Red Wings, you know, um, they're, they're obviously a great brand and they're, they're well known locally. Um, and, you know, the opportunity to be one of the first people to be on a, a helmet in the in NHL was pretty cool. And we're looking at all different types of sponsorships to continue to raise our profile while focusing on the mortgage brokers, find a mortgage helping them grow, helping them be successful. Because if they grow, we grow. Yeah. What's your what's your connection with them? I've noticed you talk about them all the time. Like you want people to use find mortgage it, are you just promoting them because, you know, you're one of the best and they're going to revert to you or are you just. Can you kind of touch on that? Well, I'm promoting them because the biggest uh, disparity in the, in the, the like the littlest known fact is is that the cheapest and best way to get a mortgage is through a mortgage broker. Whether they come to me or they go to my competitor Rocket, they go to whoever, you will always get a lower rate and a better deal by going to a mortgage broker. It's it's black and white. It's crazy. And but the thing is, you wouldn't know that because all the people that spend all the money, like if I'm going to spend a bunch of money advertising, if I'm rocket mortgage, they spend a bunch of money advertising, so you come to them. Not so you go to a broker that might come to them. I'm the reverse. I wanted to go to the brokers and it might come to me, but if it doesn't come to me, it's okay. Because you know what? Every consumer that goes to a mortgage broker gets a cheaper 
faster, easier mortgage. It's just, it's, it's not my opinion. It's fact. You, I can show you data after data. I mean, literally, if you go to Rocket Mortgage directly and they'll offer you, hey, 3% with 5,000 of fees, you go to a broker that takes you to Rocket Mortgage, even after the brokers paid their fee, your, your rate is 2.75 with 3,000 of fees. The wholesale channel is always cheaper. And so what we built our whole business on is enabling, giving the technology to the mortgage broker so that we can close loans fast, giving them the service so they can be successful. They already had the lowest rates. And so therefore we can, we capitalize on that. And that's our business. And that as that broker channel, so the mortgage broker market where is the only place. So remember, we're the number two overall lender, but I only play in 20% of the market, which is the mortgage brokers. The rocket plays in 100% of the market. Well, the mortgage brokers used to be 56% of the market pre-crisis. Went down to 14 and now it's on its way up. And when it grows to 25 to 30 to 33% over the next five, six years, we're going to grow a lot. And, and that and that's the play going forward is help them grow and we got a chance. Yeah, and I yeah, think, definitely. I, I think one of the biggest things, uh, yeah, Hugh, are you about to touch on the speed of how they do it? Yeah, you know, Matt, you just touched on, you know, how quickly you guys really close. You know, UWM closes most loans in about 15 days. The industry average is anywhere from 45 to about 60. You know, how are you able to do this and be effective? You touched on that you guys, you know, that Rocket does, you know, subprime, you know, primarily, and that you don't primarily do subprime. How can you be thorough in making sure that me, a college kid, isn't taking out a loan that I can't? Um, that I can't pay back while yet still getting that loan done in, in a third of the time. Right. No, so good question. Uh, just to clarify, Rocket, I don't think no one does subprime anymore. So Rocket's not doing subprime. Yeah. We're all doing the same loans. We're all doing loans sell to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginnie Mae. And so the FHA, yeah, yeah. VA, conventional loans. And so first off, how do we do it so much faster? It's strictly technology. You know, we have, we have over a thousand technology team members building technology to make the process faster and easier all day. Now, Rocket, and uh, who does a good job of marketing themselves, they market themselves as a technology company, and they are, to be given them credit. But but you know, how do you know if someone's great technology is really working? Well, let's look at the results. The results, they're faster. The industry is 45 to 60 days, and Rocket's like 29, 30 days, which is great. We're 15 to 17 days, submission to closing loan, application to closing, which is, and you say, well, why does that matter? Well, time kills deals. The shorter amount of time means the cheaper rate you can offer the consumer. The other thing I would add to that is nobody wants a mortgage. Like the reason people don't get mortgages is because it's a pain in the butt. Nobody wants it. And so if you can make it fast, easy, and cheap, well, they'll do it. And that's what we've been focusing on. And so, you know, Rocket Mortgage has done a good job, but what we focus on is our technology. And then of course, I'm a very big, you know, people think I'm, I like to say I'm younger, but not as young as you guys. I'm a younger CEO and I talk fast. He must be a sales guy. I'm actually an operations guy. I'm very, very big on process. And so our technology and our process is everything. And so we're, we're very focused on every aspect of the mortgage process, making it so it's so simple. So the consumer can e-sign the docs and then, they don't have to go look up their bank statements and fax over stuff. It's all electronic. We can go get the stuff for you. We make it so that you don't have to really do anything besides sign the mortgage, go through the process, qualify, back to your point about qualifying. And if you look at the top mortgage lenders, there's 25, the top 25 mortgage lenders in the country, we're always number one or number two of the highest quality, which means best credit score loans. We don't do the lower credit score loans because we're focused on fast, easy, cheap for the best borrowers, the fastest loans. And that's why we've been growing with the best quality. And even when the pandemic hit and rates went down, uh, rates went down, but the delinquencies went through the roof. We were we had lower delinquencies than almost anyone in the country, lower forbearances than almost anyone in the country. And that's because of the quality of loans. <clears throat> okay, so another big thing you're doing right now and and it, and it just seems crazy. You're turning a massive soccer arena into a place to train employees. <laughs> How did that come to be and what can that provide for your company? Yeah, so it's a good question. So we have 1.5 million square feet here and, I, and, I, and I'm really big on culture. Once again, if you guys are up in Michigan, I'd love to give you a tour. But I bought a 600,000 square foot building and we, we grew so fast that I bought the 900,000 square foot building across the road and that I built the longest bridge in America connecting them. So it's 26 <laughs> feet wide, a thousand feet long. You got to walk, we got moving walkways in there like an airport. And so we connected the buildings. Well, we're growing so fast that we might run out of space again. And so what I did is there's a, a soccer arena uh, about 400,000 square feet about, uh, you know, just on the other side of our property where we actually can connect our properties. And so we bought that partially to, to, to be a backstop in case we grow so much that we have a place. 
but also it's in the community. And so we're in an area where, you know, in Metro Detroit, where in the, in the area there's, uh, you know, we're just north of Detroit. We're in nice suburbs. Pontiac is a tougher area, which is right where our office, Bloomfield Hills and Pontiac. Bloomfield Hills is the nicest suburb. Pontiac's one of the tougher suburbs. And we're right on the border of those. And so what we did is I bought that. And, and actually the company didn't buy it. I personally bought it. I bought it. I'm going to rent part of it to the company as a space needed, but I'm actually going to turn the rest into a community center to help the kids, make it a free community center for kids locally, help make an impact on them. So it's soccer right now, but I'm going to put some basketball courts, some volleyball courts in there, bust the kids from the city uh, so they have a place to go after school, really do some right things. And so it's a kind of a defensive play for the business, but really it's a community play. Let's do good by the community, make an impact. And, and that's something I'm really passionate about is my, my mother was a teacher in this community for 25 years and how can I help the kids? And so that's why I bought the soccer arena. Not really, I know they said for a building space, but that's kind of a back, a back, back fall, a fallback, excuse me. It's really for the community, for the kids. That's great. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and just touching on, so, I mean, you said that right now you guys have about 2000 employees um, that can, because you're at 20% capacity, you and, and that you guys are growing, you know, you bought now the three properties, you know, it could, it would be significantly less money for you guys to work at home. And, and could you touch on, you know, kind of why you want everyone to be inside a building and not working from home, like kind of how, you know, big tech is moving towards? Yeah, so it's a great question. So two, two big answers to that. First, the culture, the family, the team, you can't feel the difference when you're, if everyone's remote, they're becoming independent contracts. When you're remote, so here's what it works. When you work at UWM, you'll look at our cost. If you're, you know, you guys are good investors, you guys understand it. The cost to originate a loan is a key component to why you can win in a high rate market and a low rate market. Everyone can win in a low rate market. Everyone's making a lot of money, but you got to win in all markets. And that's why we've made money every single year and always been consistently successful and profitable and growing. And so we have the cost to originate. Well, one of the things is if you have people all over the country or you have people working from home, they're not part of the team. They're just independent contractors, basically. They work from home, they're remote. And I know everyone says, oh, well, that's where the world's going. It's not where our world's going. At UWM, I don't believe in it. I believe that when we get everyone back, we are a better team. And so the cost is, you know, people love working here. People don't resign and leave here. We had more resignations because people were saying, gosh, I used to go to have drinks with my, my teammates on, on my team or a pod, or we have a company fair, we have a holiday party, we have all these cool things. And when you're not doing those things, it's less less exciting, less part of the team. So the secret sauce is our culture. And if you ever come here, you'll see it and feel it. The second thing is the reality is the efficiencies. Our technology makes our people just as efficient. So we have no drop on efficiencies. However, the reality is, and you guys work from home, maybe, maybe you feel it, like, let's be real. You know, at four o'clock, you finish a four o'clock meeting. It's like, man, I'm going to go see, I'm going to go get some chips and salsa, sit down there. Oh, the ESPN's on. We see, oh, uh, there's a trade right now that, you know, whatever, like, you, you, you're not, you're not as focused when you're in the office, you, you, it's four o'clock, you finish your work, you walk down the hall and you see someone else and they talk about something else and you come up with an idea and you get better. And so the synergies, the culture, the excitement, we're not changing that. That's part of the secret sauce. I hope everyone else goes to remote working because they're going to, they're going to have a hard time compete with us. Yeah. Uh, you, you just mentioned how, how people don't quit. Well, uh, another thing I want to touch on is you're giving your employees Cadillacs, Corvettes, and cruises, and just last month, $25 million in bonuses. I sure as hell wouldn't quit either, Matt. Um, <laughs> can you kind of touch on some of those gifts, or is that just all a big thing of the culture? Yeah, you know, you take care of people that take care of you, you know, and so this, you know, uh, this is not about Matt getting more money. Like The company's job, and so as a public company, my job is to take great care of the shareholders, and I made every one of my team members a shareholder. So now we're all going to get taken <laughs> care of together in the right way. So that's why I said, you know, no, no other SPAC has come out and said, I'm going to have a dividend, you know, before yeah. I, and I'm coming out with a dividend 40 cents. And, and once again, maybe I'll do a special dividend on top of it. Maybe we'll, we'll look at modifying and adding a variable dividend. Make it more, like if we make money, we're going to share it with our team members. And now it's our shareholders and team members together. And so I'm not going to be the kind of guy that makes a bunch of money. Let's buy back the stock. No, let's let's share with our with our with our partners, team members, and shareholders now. And so that's how we think about things. It's not all about you. Only think about yourself. You're going to miss the boat. We take care of everyone around us. You take great care of people. They take great care of your clients, and then the business keeps coming. And that's what we're all about. And so I love giving away cool things. We, you know, our holiday parties. You know, we didn't have one this past year. We had we had like a uh, well, you're talking about a more virtual holiday, party. but the year before that, I brought the chain smokers in. The year before that, we brought Ludacris in. Like we bring big parties. 
I brought Magic Johnson to speak to the company, Isaiah Thomas. Like we bring a lot of fun and it makes it a great place to work. And you know what happens? When it's a great place to work, people work harder because they want to care about the business. And when they work harder, we get more business and it just continues to funnel. In a I, I want nothing more than to come to one of your holiday parties. Let me tell okay. you. Yeah. Dan, we might have to put in one of our resumes. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I think I think we have like good resumes. Job. We'll 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 join over one winner. Uh, we're short term employees. You know, we'll put <laughs> our two weeks immediately. Well, uh, first week of December, and then say it just isn't working out. We're dying. I, I've had some. I mean, people it's <laughs> nothing nothing against you. It's, it's <laughs> just we're, we're it's just the kind of guys we are. Uh, Hugh, do you have any more co- uh, questions about the company before I go into my last two basketball questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Matt. Listen, you know, as an investor, I love, you know, we talked about your competitive nature. We we talked about, you know, I I really want, uh, you know, for just a quick story, you know, there's a parking garage outside of my, outside of um, my building. Okay. And the parking garage, my roommate just started his parking lease. Okay. He don't tell them, but they didn't take down his payment info. And for a lack of, for, for, for the short story, it was simply because the employee did not care. So I love that you're going back and you, you know, you're, you're putting in, so now, I mean, it's 300 bucks a month. You know, if I was an owner and I saw that mistake, which I'm sure it's not the only one, you know, I would be, I, I wouldn't be happy. And so I love that you're putting, you know, that money back into the employees and, and that, you know, they have a stake inside the equity. Um, but the question that I do have is that as investors, you know, if I'm seeing on your balance sheet, you know, Corvettes and I'm seeing certain stuff like that, um, you know, and then you go and raise capital, you know, that's going to make me question, um, you know, what's really going on? Because I don't know, you know, we have a lot of companies that we follow where, um, you know, we're seeing, you know, the, the stock's trading at, you know, $22 a share and they do a raise that's massive for $17 a share. And then at the next, you know, board meeting, we're seeing the CEO get a 52% bump in his salary. So it, my, I guess my question is, is that how much capital do you have um, to sustain at your certain level with your growth and will you need to do a raise? Yeah, so it's a great question. So a couple of things. First off, once again, take care of your people. They take care of the business. And so yeah. think about it. I, I obviously, it gets headlines. Let's talk the $25 million of bonuses or Corvettes and Cadillacs and cool stuff and cruises and all the cool stuff. If you're, you know, but let's, you know, if you if you want to be, you know, you guys are financial investors, you guys get it like, we're talking what 25 million plus all the things I just talked about. We're talking about 30 million dollars. And then if you think about yeah, it, yeah. you know, in the third quarter, I can't share the fourth quarter numbers yet, but the third quarter we made 1.45 billion in profit, right? And so very profitable. We have, you know, when this we're gonna have over 1.4 billion dollars of cash on balance sheet. And so the way I look at it is you, you, you don't make money by holding all the money, you make money by spending money and investing. So I don't consider a $25 million bonuses or Corvettes or like all these things. Those aren't spending money. Those are investments in people, investments in the future, yeah. investment. And you'll see my income isn't going up. It's not about Matt. It's about our team. Take care of my team members. They take care of the business and our clients. And then the business takes care of itself. And so that's how you got to think about it. You, you As an investor, what you got to say is, hey, you know, look at any business. Do you believe in the leader? Do you believe in the guy that's running it? Because, you know, you, you could never know the details of our business at, at just at the level I would know just because you wouldn't want to know. You wouldn't care. But you have to believe in the guy that runs it or the girl that runs it. If you believe in them, then you don't have to worry about those things. And so, like, if you just want to, you know, we get to the, into the, into the weeds of it, like at $25, $30 million, and we made a whole bunch of money, yeah. right? And it's like, that's what you do. Yeah. You take care of people and you spread it out to your team members. They feel great. And then it, just think of it this way. If every person, if, if I get... A hundred people out of my eight thousand that stay on the team because of that. Well, watch that return on investment, right? You can start doing the calculations. I can give you a whole bunch of models on it, but the right thing. Then the day, besides that, there's a whole bunch of models and financial reasons. It's the right thing to do. You take care of people. When you have a great year, you take care of your shareholders. You take care of your team members. When you don't have as great a year, you don't take care of the people at the same level. That's the way it's going to always be. All right. So yeah. we we've, we've got we've got three more, and we have fifteen minutes. So good. Let's do let's it. Hit them. Okay. So you obviously love both basketball and your company. Are there ever days where you look back and wonder how your life would be different if you had taken the assistant coach job at Cleveland State instead of joining UWM? <laughs> yeah, it would be a lot different. I do think about, you know, I, I you know, to, looking at going into coaching. So when I played my whole life and I wasn't good enough to make the NBA, the, the next thing is you say, well, now I want to coach because all I knew was basketball. And so I, I spent a year with Izzo, then got offered a, a division one assistant job. I was one of the youngest, uh, I think, division one assistant at the time. Um, 
However, I turned it down and, you know, my, my between Izzo and my father, they said, why don't you go work at this? More? And I told my father, I'll go work at the little mortgage company. He didn't know much, you know, just his little thing on the side. Uh, and if I don't like it after a year, I'm going back to basketball because that's my pat. And it took me about a couple months to realize that I didn't love basketball, dribbling the ball. What I loved was the competition, competing. And I found a way to channel that into the mortgage world. If I would have went to a business that maybe didn't report their numbers, maybe you couldn't see what a competitors are doing, it might not have been the same thing. But I don't ever think back about what I could have done differently. I love the choice I made. I love it. Uh, and the basketball stuff. I mean, that, I love basketball. I can watch games with you and spend time with you and go to games. But but I love mortgage business and I love people. And the basketball business is great. You only get 12, 15 people on your team. And mortgages, I have 8,000 people. I can make an impact on so many people and their kids and their families. I really love what I do. I, I think that's one of the cool things about uh, us in general, like bet between you and us, is, is both of what we do is um, – is, is competitive it, in the stock market. I mean, we're competing against everyone else. Someone has to lose money for us to make money. And uh, I mean, it sucks to think about it that way, but that, that's just the way it is. But, but that's business. Like, you, you know, there's always you know, in life, there's win, you win or you lose. Like it's, it's, it's a zero sum game. You know, if you play a game of football, one team wins, one team loses. If you're buying stocks and, and that's why you guys are great. What you do, you guys are, you guys are in the weeds. You guys know the stocks to look at. You guys are, you guys aren't just, I've got people ask me questions about our stock and about things. You guys are actually asking intelligent questions that apply to the business. And then you got to make your own decision. Do I want to ride with them or do I not? And that's what people make the decision. And that's the buyers or sellers, right? You're doing a good job of convincing us to keep you. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Ne next one is you've hired five of your former teammates to work with you at UWM. You guys make quite the squad. Uh, aside from just the benefits of having a history of people that you work with, are there any other benefits? And could you see any mortgage lender or even finance company fielding a team or a starting five that could be yours? <laughs> yeah, so I, I got a bunch of my teammates. I have uh, it's me plus six guys. I got uh, Mateen Cleves, who was the national player of the year or the the, the, the MVP of the of the Final Four that year. I got Charlie Bell. Both those guys played in the NBA for years. Uh, Antonio Smith, Adam Wolf, Chris Hill, who was, was a, a dynamite shooter, also played in, in the NBA in summer leagues, I think. And then, then me and another walk on. So we didn't, we didn't get it. But the rest of the guys did some pretty good Crown things. favorites. Yeah, I, I, I could put a really good team of the five and I could be the coach and we'd be okay. Uh, but, you know, the, the benefits are besides that, it's they're my guys and they take care of people. But that's not the way, like I'll get them in the door, but then they got to work their butts off. But they know the expectation. They, if you played for Izzo, you know what we're doing here. And Mateen Cleaves, who was the, you know, the, the national player of the year, the superstar, he knows what it takes. So he's one of my leadership coaches. He's coaching my leaders about how we, how we hold people accountable, how we drive people to get better, how we catch them doing it right, high five at people. It's part of the culture. And, that, and that's a big part of our thing of to be successful is helping those people um, by, because people that know us and, and Izzo comes down with his team and they walk through like, we have that culture and that family. And the way I look at it is, if you don't want to be part of that team and that family and take care of each other, then you're, you're not a great fit for UWM. And most people want to be part of a team. And my teammates help uh, foster that throughout the company. All right. Last question. So, so you've clearly mentioned the competitiveness and how important it is to master your craft and be the best at it. We hit number one stock market podcast, but we want number one business podcast and one day overall number one podcast. In your eyes, in your short time here, what could we do better in an interview setting to propel us to that? Well, so I love it. So the way I think about it for you guys is you guys did a great job thinking about it. I'm on this show, right? I'm proud. I was excited when you guys mentioned me in Twitter and you got a great Twitter following. And at the same time, you guys have a lot of other people. And so what you got to do is you got to explain and when you're going through it, how do you spread your wings, right? If part of it is you got to have substance, which you guys already have, and we know that. But beyond that is then you got to have a little bit of sizzle to get people to watch your podcast, follow you, go through that process. And so how do you do that? One thing is bring on good guests. Hopefully I'm not deteriorating. Hopefully I'm helpful in some way. <laughs> but, but at the same time, what other things can you do to drive it? So the way I thought of it was I always thought differently. At my business, everyone told us, go this way, go build a retail channel, compete with like Quicken. And, and I went this way. I said, let's go dominate. Let's go be the best in this market. So create a niche and be the best. Don't try to be everything to everyone. So you want to be the number one stock market podcast, the number one, you know, financial, like, okay, don't try to be the number one grocery store. Pod, like, like let's dominate in our industry. Right. And so too many people who, you know, I talk to when I talk to schools and kids and different people, they try to be good at everything instead of great at one thing. And 
I'm a, I'm a one trick pony. I'm the best at mortgage is what I want to focus. I'm the best leader in the mortgage business. And that's what I want to be. And obviously I got to get better and continue to improve, but I'm not trying to be a, I'm not trying to own 18 different businesses and do different things. I'm trying to be the best here. And for my shareholders, you guys and others, that's what they want. They want a guy that's here living, sleeping, breathing mortgage. And so I would say the same thing for you. Live, sleep, breathe what you guys do. You're on Twitter. You're following different people. You're tweeting at different people. You're in the world. You're connecting with people and you keep doing those things. And you know what happens? It will have to take time. It took me 18 years, right? You know, I, I tell a story. I'll, I don't want to digress. I tell a story. Yeah, you know, I, I get up here. I'm in the office at 4 a.m. So, you know, I'm here at 4 a.m. in the office, suit and tie. I stayed till 637. I came from no, I didn't come from money. Like, you know, I joke about Dan Gilbert who runs Rocket and Quicken Mortgage, uh, Quicken Loans. And then Jay, Jamie Diamond, these guys, these guys are first officer, you know, do you want to, they're smarter than me. Second off, they had more money than me, right? <laughs> but the thing is, they're not willing to outwork me. I get 24 hours a day and so do they. And I've decided years ago that, hey, listen, if I work at 4 a.m. and they get there at seven, that's three hours a day, 15 hours a week, 60 hours a month, 720 hours a year. That if, are they 720 hours smarter than me? I don't think so. And actually, yes. maybe they were, it took me 17 years. So maybe to do the math, they might be either like 8,000 hours, but I've been doing it all the time. And so I'd say the same thing to you. Who's willing to put the work in? Who's willing to do the things that you guys are doing? And the fact that I'm here and I know who you guys are and I follow you guys and look at what you guys are doing. I know there's other people doing the same thing. So keep up the great work. You guys are doing awesome. I'm a friend in the business. I'm not a stock guy, but I'm a mortgage guy. And, and hopefully uh, if I could ever answer questions or help you in any way, you just reach out to me. Well, you're about to have a lot of stock. That's for sure. <laughs> that, that's true as well. You're right. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you yeah. wanted to close this out real quick and for if you want to see what you guys say and, and we'll close this out. Yeah, Matt, this was such a great time. You know, I really like, I, I really enjoyed this interview. You know, in fact, I think I'm going to increase my stake inside uh, <laughs> UWM coming up. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, tomorrow morning. Um, my last question, you know, do, do I need a college degree? Because neither Dan nor I need have our, our college degrees. Do we need our college degree to, depl- to apply at UWM? Yeah, absolutely not. So I think maybe you saw what I said, or maybe you're asking, I don't know if you know, but I, I talk about all the time. I don't care if you graduated, uh, you know, from the best school in America, college. I don't care if you didn't graduate from high school at all. It doesn't matter to me. All I want is heart. I want work ethic and attitude and people that care. And, you know, anyone can come in here. I'll hire someone and you know, just like me, and you've got to work your way up. And that's how I think about everyone. And so we're all about great work ethic, great attitude, people that want to be part of something special. And that's what we're building here. And I'm, I'm glad that people outside of our four walls, such as you guys are able to get a little peek inside and see what we're doing. But we're looking for great people all the time. You guys are probably too good. You know, if you guys come, you'll probably run my, take my job one day, but then that's okay. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm 41. So I only got about 20 more years, but uh, you know, what I think about is work ethic and attitude. And I think that ties to your eyes business too. Anything you guys are doing, anyone's doing, it's all about, are you willing to outwork everybody? Do you have a great attitude? Cause it doesn't always go great. And that's what we look for here. College education doesn't matter to me at all. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been an absolute pleasure and uh, I'll definitely send you the link whenever we post it, man. Thank you. Thank you again for coming. We've had a blast. Uh, appreciate thank it. you, Matt. Really. Thanks so much for having me guys. It was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. All right. Take care and uh, enjoy ringing the bell. That'll be a blast. I'm excited. All right. See ya. <laughs>